Okay, I think I mentioned that the stereo does not work, right? It, it kind of does, but um, let's see if I turn this on. Hear that, Jen, that pop noise? So we're on XM, it looks like, and nothing's coming out. Now, it looks like USB aux XM. I mean, doesn't it look like it's to be making noise somewhere? Did I mention these subwoofers? Well, here they are. Two 600 watt JBL intercooled automotive competition series subwoofers built into the wall. Now, if I were an amplifier, maybe I'd be hiding behind those. So I'm gonna pop this cover off. I also just wanna show you, I do have the recliner tipped over here. And um, I thought at one point that maybe only one side of this thing worked. As it turned out, only one side was plugged in. So each side has its own individual plug there. And that one was not plugged in. Now, given the fact that nothing else has been thrown away since this boat was built, my guess is that plug I need to run both sides of this will be nowhere to be found because it'll be the one thing I'm looking for that shouldn't have been thrown away. So anyway, I think I'm going to Pull this cover off this subwoofer and see what's behind it and then now that i've got this area kind of cleaned up i did pull that plug out and fished it out of the holes there so um i'll probably wind up sliding this chair a little closer to the wall that's my radiator for the diesel heater so water circulates through that and it just kind of hot air rises that one is not fan fed the ones on the other there's two on that side that are one in the bathroom or in the master stateroom and the one in the kitchen and the forward stateroom are have little fans behind a littler grill but that one's kind of a longer grill and just you know the convection rises the heat air out of it hot air out of it and cold air goes in the bottom so yeah making good progress but um i just thought i'd show you got the tear chipped out chair tipped over and i'm going to see if there is an amplifier somewhere behind the wall here to see what we have in terms of the stereo. So this is what we have. Holy shebang. <laughs> wow. Is that a mess or what? I've never seen anybody put something together like that. So here's a splitter over here. We got 
nine miles of cabling of everything. That's the um, CD player, I think. Got XM interface. There's our XM box up there. And I was wondering, did we have any amps? Well, yes, we have three of them. A P840, a P4100, and a P210. And again, our another part of our XM arrangement up there. So, uh, <clears throat> I I think what first I'll do is um, break this down to its component parts a little bit and see where all of the speakers are going. That's obviously all these yellow wires because I did find yellow wires back there too. Those amplifiers or those booster those um, subwoofers when I was looking behind them so I'm gonna start peeling into this a little bit and um, see what we got see if I can make heads or tails out of this thing now the good thing about it is with the parts that I have there the amplifiers the speakers speaker wire all run all of this could be built fresh and um, I'm just going to, you know, I'll need a new fresh piece of wood probably to do my headboard with. But if that's the worst that I have out of this, it won't be so bad. So I'm going to tear into it. See if I can clean this up a little bit. I mean, this just goes against my nature. This just drives me batshit crazy when people tie stuff up and... I don't know, man, what a freaking mess. So I can't deal with that. And shame on you, Mr. Cable or stereo installer who did this and called it done. Um, you should be beat. So there it is. Now there's your before. Okay, okay. lest you think I've lost my mind as I've torn into this mess, Let's discuss a little bit the components here, because other than 12 miles of cable, this is not all that complicated. So what we have, I'm gonna spin you around here, is we have an upside down Sony 12 disc CD changer. Um, it had RG, RCA output and power or control for that. No big deal. Then we had our head unit for the stereo here. We had this equalizer thing and we had our input source selector here from Sony. So this was output to the head unit on this side. We had XM in and the CD changer. So all that was doing was basically giving us the ability to take more than one input into the head unit. We have the Sony controller that was up on the bridge and then we have the XM box with a little uh, digital adapter thing that went in the middle of the XM box, which again had regular audio output on one side, had the XM antenna on the other side. The XM antenna was up on the bridge. So we went up through the floor of the bridge and it was pushed way forward under the fiberglass under there and that was it. So then we had a lot of cable. So this cable here was basically the long set of cables to run both this controller and up to the top. And then this con to control uh, our, our splitter here. So we had one port of this into there, one port of it into there the other port into the head unit to be our hook all our control units together. That's how we could change source and so forth. So there was that. There was this long cable, which was between the um, CD changer and this input device here. And we just had a bunch of RCAs and power over here. Now, what we have still dangling out of the roof up here is I pushed everything out of here that I could get out of here. Um, 
But what I have left is, you know, the things that were going like into that audio control unit. And I think what we're going to find is all of these go into an amplifier. And it's a little dark up there. Sorry, my light for my, that. well, let's see, maybe we can turn on the phone light. But the amps, I believe we're going to find that we have one um, standby. I'll be back. Okay, so then we have just the rest of these speaker cables, which are going into the amplifiers. And um, I think we're going to find we have like one side going in and getting amplified coming out the other side. Now, this set right here, besides being very long, was the only set that was going directly into the head unit. Um, it was basically audio control right rear and left rear, and I think that might have, might be our subwoofer. Zzz, subwoofers. Then we have these, and I, all I had was um, paper and some clear tape, but I have marked all these based on their orientation in the knobs for the that little control unit that lets you turn up and down the the volume in the various areas. So there was a zone, I'll call it, that was the V-berth. There was a zone that is the bridge. The main salon here was not marked as a separate zone. And then the aft cabin was a zone. And then the aft deck was a zone. So essentially, we have master cabin, salon, V-berth, flybridge, aft deck. Five zones, really, and I'm not doing a very good job holding the camera steady, am I? But we have five zones and subwoofers. So now I know what I've got. I have way too much cable. I mean, why not just, you know, if you're making your cables, well, I guess that one's a prefab, but, um, you know, I guess the guy wanted to work on the thing down here on the bench. And so he left enough cable to come clear down here. This is all of the power distribution. And I think what I'm gonna find is that I have power that's coming over here to my switch panel because this switch powers everything on. And then I should have power going to each of those amplifiers. So all in all, this is not all that complicated. I know it's a mess and it looks messy. Also, there's a old fashioned antenna here for um, probably just a radio input into the thing for the FM antenna. I guess that's what that is. So I'll have to see where that might be going back up to the back on the radar arch up there somewhere to an actual antenna. <clears throat> but some of my cabling also changes from this yellow stuff, gets spliced into red and black. And, um, and then, you know, the guy used a roll and a half of Electrician's tape, which after, you know, how that stuff is, after years, it just gets gooey and sticky and messy. So I might just rewire everything with clean wire and not not do electrician's tape this mess like this. But <clears throat> I know what I got now. And I got a lot of speakers. And I'm going to... I've got... Everything pretty much identified. I probably am not going to use any of that stuff anymore. Maybe that splitter unit, but um, probably not. And I don't even think, I think there's a better way to control my zones than what we're doing here with these switches. What these are is these were like a transformer or rheostat or whatever you want to call it. And there was one of these for each zone. And... Um, I can reuse those if I can get the knobs off to get them out of this board because I'm going to take that board with me to a lumber yard. I'm going to find me a new piece of oak or whatever that is to go up in here. Hi, dog. And um, whilst I'm at it, I might just do all three pieces of that new because um, I, I otherwise I may have one in the middle that kind of looks goofy. But yeah, this project uh, was looking like it was getting off to a rocky start there to begin with. But, you know, an hour or so of kind of just figuring everything out, 
and marking it as best I could. I didn't have any masking tape, so I had to make do with what I could make do with. But um, I all I've got yet to do now is just figure out my power situation, and it'll be ready to go start shopping for a new smart head unit. And I will look for one that, well, I'll, I'll look for one that has a marine control unit if I can get one, but I also want to have a little better control over the zones. So uh, yeah, I'll have to see what, what we got, but we'll do a little shopping for that stuff online. Thanks to the internet and we'll find some parts. So what I'm going to do for now, it's about dinner time and uh, I'm going to just shove these wires back up in the top up here and leave this hole open for now, because like I said, I'm going to put a new piece of lumber there. So, I'll leave it for now, and then I will probably, there is an opening right above the kitchen there, although I'd probably need a ladder to get up there. I just want to see if I can tell if those amps are actually lighting up, because I assume there's no reason to assume there they wouldn't be, but I can't really tell that for sure at this point. So, figure out if the amps are firing, and if we can kind of prove that they are where I think they're going, which I think the one that's to the subwoofers is that one. I think it's its own amp. The other two are splitting duty through the rest of these zones. So there we go. Not so bad. All right, we got we got a little um, discovery to do here. So let me show you what we got here. So the this is the we'll call it the port side amp. Port being the let's. Oh, port side of the boat is that way okay so those four RCA plugs on the port side of that amp are coming in from this set of cables hanging right here I believe and then so there's four of those and then there's four of them which are coming over here this set and they're going into this amplifier and then that amp's going out to speakers so maybe that's a preamp type thing not sure but there's also this big red wire that you see there the red braided there's two of them right there so they are powering these obviously and i'll show you where they go i think i'm gonna have to take that third panel down hang on we'll go have a look up there okay so you can see our big red cables are coming in here and let's see if I can get my light to stand up here for a second so I can point. Okay. So here's our big red braided cables, which are going into this, these guys turning around, coming back out. This cable down here, which ultimately splits off that's our main power there I think so it looks like still got a little figuring out to do on this power situation so I'm gonna do that and figure out where my power input is so I know what I'm dealing with but I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this panel down as well you can kind of see it it's gonna have to get rebuilt as well because that little I'm gonna I'm gonna have to rebuild the center one for sure and while I'm doing it I'll do all three of them. <coughs> all right, well, hopefully you can see me okay. It's getting a little dark. The weather has closed right in. When I'm looking out here, it's rainy and the cl clouds have settled right down to the water nearly. But uh, let's spin you around and I'll show you what we got here. So every one of these cables are no longer necessary. Some of these, like this guy, was laying up on top of there just like that um, this green wire was not attached to anything this gray wire was not attached to anything so they all go up through the same hole there and I'm not sure where that hole where above that hole is I'll go up on the bridge again and see if I can find it up there hopefully I can because if I can I'll pull them all up out of there and terminate them get them cleaned up from wherever they are if not 
I'll cut them off here, mark them, cover the ends, whatever, mark them all and used, and leave them there. So one is this old antenna wire that was trying to go to the stereo. Um, one was an antenna wire that went to a prior radio, I believe. And then obviously we had our extra power for the radio that was not in use up there. So a lot of stuff over time has obviously been taken out and changed in this boat. But what we're left with is, again, our main power up here and about three or four or five sets of wires going up in there that look like they run speakers. So the speaker wires we like, the rest of it we don't and we'll get rid of. Um, this set over here, all of these, including I believe this guy, can go, oh, sorry, not that guy, this guy, can go back up top through the bridge. Now where I know where they're coming, um, I think I can sort them out up there. And, um, cause they do that hole where those go in, that comes out under the helm station up there. You kind of open the cabinet and crawl back in there. So, making good progress. Um, these ones that I know I'm not going to use, I'm going to cut them off short and then I'll figure out if I can pull them up through there and get rid of them. But um, yeah, making decent progress here. Uh, this coax I might leave. It wasn't terminated properly, but I'll figure out which antenna it's going to because that might be, we might want to keep an FM antenna there for the, for the new stereo, although who am I kidding? I never listen to FM radio. so. Probably not. And I did have one, I got one red and white wire here that has been snipped off. I did not chop that off. That was cut off and that's going up in there. So again, my red and whites, I think, or, or red and black, sorry, are, are turning into some of these speaker wires because we know we had red and black here, like I said, and over there. So yeah, it's not a horrific mess you know i mean just need some tidying up and i think it's gonna all be okay okay i think i'm making some sense out of this cable mess so let's see what we've got here i'll show you i've got my tablet kind of underneath everything so you can kind of see what we got so this went into the sony head unit okay so obviously we have power going up here to our red and black. So that's the yellow and black into the head unit. This red wire here went to this wire, which I believe may also be power, but might be power on all the time. You know, typically with a stereo, you have some little bit of juice in there all the time to keep its memory so it stays programmed. This blue wire is our trigger for our amplifier to turn the amps on. This wire right here comes up here and splits out and is the trigger wire to each of the amplifiers. So there's three wires there coming to this relay. The other thing that was coming out of the relay is power to that, that mixing unit that was in the middle. That's what these wires were for. So they were probably also being turned on when this relay is turning on. I think that's why this relay was here. Um, that'll tell us if we look really close what that thing does. So anyway, um, yeah, we got we got power, which I'm pretty sure that if I were to if I cut this off right here and check it, this will be what comes on and off when my switch is turned on and off. This, if I cut this, I'm expecting, or if I pull that plug out of there, I'm expecting to have that be kind of powered up all the time. So I'm going to get my, my meter and plug in and see if I can verify some of that. But I think I'm getting it figured out here. So this chunk will obviously not stay because this went to that power unit. I'm not sure if I'll need this relay. I might be able to come straight out of the amp and go straight to the thing. I think the reason this is here is because other stuff needed to be turned on and um, there's a ground out of that relay and yeah so it's not that overly complicated so I'll test things and 
if I'm right and that's what everything is, then I'll bother you no further with that explanation. If it turns out that I'm wrong, I'll come back and tell you I was wrong and explain what I found. Okay, well, I was slightly backwards. The one I thought was power all the time is not. So, let's see if I can show you what I got here. So, this is our big red wire. If I plug into there, you see on our meter we have 12 volts, right? And this radio switch is off right now. So that is on hot all the time. This wire, which I thought was the one that would be on all the time, if I plug into it right now, there's nothing. But let's see if I can flip that switch now and keep that connected. So now when I flip my switch, we get 12 volts on that. So white and black is our switched power. Red and black here, hot all the time. So now we'll pull out the head unit of the new unit and look through the manual and see what my wire configuration like that for that should be to make sure we can get it powered, first of all. And um, I'll clean up this mess a little too. This just, I mean, dude, come on. Why did you make such a mess out of this stuff? This wire... Well, whatever. I'll just clean this mess up. I have opened up my box from Garmin. This is the head unit, the RA770. And these are the remote control units. So I got one white one and a black one. The white one will go up on the bridge. The black one will go back in the master stateroom. And I believe these are wireless Bluetooth little devices that just kind of go on the wall. So um, those should be pretty easy to set up. So I will for now be setting the head unit up here and just positioning it roughly, letting it sit up here for now. So I've got to start to lay out my cables, replacing my old yellow stuff with my new stuff, getting everything labeled, run it back to here, hook us up and start to check it out see how it goes so um, I'll get started on this we'll see how we do okay in the interest of consuming some caloric intake uh, I gotta have some dinner I'm calling a halt right now to the project so what I've done is I have marked my power this one as 12 volt switch to put a label on it I just kind of gently laid everything back up in here the stuff that's gonna come out that I think can come out just so I have it out of my way to work, I've zip stripped it all together there and over there. And those can go away, I think, when we're done. But for now, they're out of the way and they'll be out of mind as I'm working on this. They won't be getting in my way and me scratch my head trying to figure out what's, what's what. So, um, I have the installation instructions for the new head unit right here. They actually print those out and send you a copy. However, they print them in about the smallest font known to man. So I got to get the bright light going and have a good hard look at that. Make sure that I can figure out where my power in and out and my amp trigger and then which of those RCA fittings or connectors goes to which set of speakers for the four zones. And um, I can start laying that out. But I will take all my lumber home with me and because um, I'm leaving day after tomorrow to go back to Utah and I will be building out new units and um, probably won't cut a radio fitting into that thing for right now, but I, I will have it to where I could put a new radio in there. This one over here, all that's really gonna need is my head unit because the old head unit was in that hole, the CD changer's in that hole, and we're not putting a CD changer back in, and we don't need those switches anymore. So what we'll have when I'm done is we're going to have one panel over here with, I don't know, sorry, where I was pointing the camera, but I was not pointing where my hand is pointing. Now it is. So this side, we're going to have a speaker set. And right now we have the clock and the barometer. This set will have the radio and that's all. 
So I might put the clock and the barometer on this panel and have that just be a speaker. This will just be a speaker and a VHF radio and we'll call it good. So I'll, like I said, I think what I'll do is I'll go upstairs, I'll get my brand, uh, well, it's a Simrad radio, but I'll get the model number and look at getting an uh, absolute repeat of that radio to put down here. So again, I only have to learn how to use one radio and I'll get that coax splitter and I'll probably take both of these old coax cables out because I'm sure they go out and go to one of the older antennas out there. So I may be able to even remove one antenna from the outside of the boat. So um, there you have it. That's the plan at this point. But for right now, I gotta eat some dinner. And then um, tomorrow, I mean, it's raining like, like it's seriously getting after the rain out there. So I have, I'm gonna try to clean the back of the boat up a little bit. I've got a lot of recyclable stuff to, you know, I'll haul a couple of loads off to the bin up there throw away what garbage I can throw away. I won't be able to throw away that ice maker. I'm sure I'm gonna to have to dispose of that thing properly, but the door from it and the trays and all that stuff I can get rid of. And then um, kind of prep the boat for going back to Salt Lake. I'll have to clean up a little bit and um, tidy up. I'm gonna, you know, get everything else ready and then off we go. Not gonna get the water purifier hooked up this time around, but um, I feel like if I get this rest of the stereo, at least I know where I'm at now. I feel pretty good about that. So, you know, this has been productive. Um, so, yeah, we're good.